going to go ahead and, and get started. So uh, um, thank you to Michael from Green Mountain Public TV for being here. Um, this, that makes these meetings accessible to those who, who can't make it. Um, and it also gives us an opportunity to go back and, and you know, if somebody said something and we missed it, we can go back and catch it. So uh, thank you, Michael, for being here. Um, so the topic of tonight's meeting is actually uh, prevention conversations. How do you talk about prevention? Um, so often, you know, there's so many different ways to talk about prevention. It could just be really casually with a friend or, uh, you know, another parent, or it could be really formal. And, you know, it's really easy to sort of psych yourself out about those conversations and, and get like really, you know, worked up, or at least that's what I find. So, um, so tonight's going to be relatively informal. It's going to be a sort of a different format than we've done before. Um, we're going to do introductions here in a moment. And, um, and then we're going to do just a, a short, just kind of tips from, you know, uh, life lessons that we've kind of, you know, taken away. And then we're going to go into breakout rooms where you can actually workshop, um, you know, one of maybe a conversation you had that you would have wished had gone differently, or perhaps a conversation, you know, that you want to have. Um, and just with others, you know, because this is a safe space. So uh, in light of that, you know, what in those breakout rooms, what is said there sort of stays there. Um, also, we want to be really careful, you know, as we're having prevention conversations to, you know, share topics and situations, but don't share identifying features. So, you know, we're not going to say, I was talking to, you know, the principal at such and such school, you know, it's not that sort of, you know, we want to just kind of keep the general um, so that way it does stay a, a safe environment. So uh, no identifying details if you're talking about a specific situation or conversation that you've had. So uh, with that, we're going to go into introductions. Uh, so your name and a setting that you've envisioned having a conversation or experience. So, so like I'm going to say, you know, my name is Jessica. I live in Johnson and I would like to have a conversation around the fire pit. Uh, with friends about substance prevention. And I am going to tag uh, Haley. Hi, uh, I'm Haley. I am a staff assistant over at Johnson. I'm based in the Wellness Center, which runs as the Counseling Center. Um, and I've also am a grad student working on clinical mental health counseling. So I have a few different roles in the community right now. Um, yeah, I, I think when people talk about like prevention, at least from my generation of being in school, it was like the DARE model or like this is your brain and this is your brain on drugs. So I think like shifting, shifting it to talk to our kids in a way that is engaging and also like that balance of funky and weird, but also accessible to them. Because if you go too far into the lecture, they're like, eh. If they go too far the other direction, they're like, you're just a weird person um, and I'm not going to listen to you. So it's, you know, working on that type of communication and finding that nice balance. Cool. Uh, Deb? Hi, everyone. I'm Deb Shepke. And um, this is such a great question, Jessica, because I feel like, um, you know, you have to start so young with your kids, in my opinion, um, and with community members about just educating about the risks and of drugs and alcohol and mental health and all of that. And so I guess for me, you know, when your kids are in your house, you know, you have different opportunities to talk to them here and there or driving them somewhere. But I'm curious about two things. One is when they are super young, you know, what's a good way to either role play or use puppets or, or talk to really young kids so that we can start this education process about the risks associated with substances um, at a very young age. So that's kind of the first thing. And then the second thing is once they're out of the house, um, you really don't see them very much anymore. And so you're, 
really only Zooming with them or talking on the phone. And that can be a little awkward because you don't see them. You can't see their, their hand movements, their eyes rolling, whatever it is. So I feel like, you know, from those two perspectives, um, I'm curious about. Awesome, good. Uh, Maria? Hi guys, I'm Maria Davies. I live in Stowe and I'm a parent of two kids and Deb, one's graduating off to university. So I'll be in those shoes very soon. Um, so I guess I want to talk to my parents who I, I see on the quiet path. I see it, you know, in, in the village and they stop me and they say, Hey Maria, you know, do you have data on this in a parent cafe in a different setting, you know, hopefully one day in for real, you know, in real life and just talk to them about what it, what prevention is because uh, Stowe's a party town and, you know, I want them to understand the data because sometimes we as parents normalize substances that we shouldn't be normalizing. And so I want to educate them better on, you know, what we're doing and maybe taking a step back and thinking, you know, maybe I shouldn't be doing this, you know? And so having that conversation with parents doesn't always come easy, but I think parents are really, you know, open right now to really, you know, having that conversation, especially right now because of COVID, because their kids are taking up things that they shouldn't be taking. Yeah, thank you for that perspective. Uh, Ken? Good evening, everyone. Um, my name's Ken. I'm over here in East Hardwick. Um, I am a father of a biological son. He's 28 years old. Um, and I have, we're fostering two young gentlemen right now, 13 and 14 years old, uh, indefinite, indefinitely. Um, and, you know, when you're raising your own son, you know, having these talks about prevention just comes a much more natural way because it's your son. Um, we, we've had a minor uh, incidents with one of my boys and, and, and uh, experimenting, well, using, not experimenting, using a, a vape e-cigarette and stuff. So I want to learn how to, uh, the, their backgrounds, what they've come from, what they've seen, what they've been exposed to is way different than, and then the normal, you know, so, so how to have these conversations and, and educate them that that behavior is not what we consider normal. And as I'm doing it right now, not that I've had any huge problems with any type of, of um, substance or anything, but you know, I, I chewed tobacco since I was 14. I just quit four years ago. I'm 52 years old. It's a lot of years, you know, I want to share my experiences because I, I know what I'm saying when it's about me and, and the dangers of, of, you know, tobacco, the dangers of, of use and overuse or abuse of alcohol and then God, illegal drugs and everything that's so much more prevalent than when I was a, a child growing up. So that, that's what I like coming to this meeting to hear how you guys are putting this material together and the handbook that I downloaded last month um, and whatnot is, is just gives me pointers on how to, how to go about having these talks. Cause even like, I know this is off topic a little bit, but uh, with one of the boys, the, 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 the birds and the bees talk has come up. We decided because of the background, we're gonna let the social staff and the, the school staff kind of guide that conversation. They're more educated than we are. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. And, and relying on those resources is, is definitely a, a really valid strategy. So, great, thank you, Ken. Uh, Brian? I'm Brian Duda. I'm the Youth Substance Prevention Coordinator for Healthy Lamont Valley. Um, and so I guess the, the, the question was the setting to talk prevention right okay and i would i think a fireplace is an awesome setting i would say anywhere for me would be anywhere outdoors like going for a hike or just sitting somewhere in nature 
Um, yeah, so that's, that's what I have to say. Uh, Scott? Yeah, thanks, Jessica. Um, hey there, everybody. I'm Scott Weathers, and I live in Stowe. Um, in my day job, I work on kind of sustainable food policy issues uh, across the country. Um, and if I had to pick a place to talk about uh, substance use and prevention, uh, it would probably be whatever place the other person is most comfortable. Uh, I know that's a little bit of a cop-out answer, but I think that it's really important to consider not just kind of the, the place that we talk about these issues, but but also the time and that, uh, you know, some, sometimes folks aren't interested in these kinds of conversations. And so really thinking carefully about both of those aspects, time and place, I think are is, is really essential. And um, I guess if I had to pick one for me, though, I would agree with Brian, outside of nature is a, is, is a great place to do it. Good, good. Thank you. Um, and, and it's so true, you know, time and place and, and reading the person you're talking with, you know, their body language, um, you know, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll get into it a little bit later, but you don't have to say everything in one conversation. I think that's sometimes a, a mistake we make that we try to pack it all in, you know, and, and that just turns people off. So, uh, yeah, thank you for that, Scott. Uh, Betsy? Morrisville. And I think the fire pit is a great idea as far as friends and neighbors and, and others. I don't know when we'll ever have people around our fire pit again. Um, but it, for our family, uh, nighttime car rides, car rides in the dark are great times for us to talk with teenagers and, um, and, and mine is learning to drive. So we're going on a night drive as soon as we're done here. So <laughs> Good, good. Yeah, the car is such a, a like great thing. It's great when they're babies and you need it's like the, you know, the the big pacifier, but also, uh, you know, that that those teenage years to uh, the car is such an important time. So, uh, Katie. Hi, thanks for letting me just listen to. Um, so I'm a family doc in Stowe and also a parent and also a coach. So I kind of think about different settings for different groups of people. I think for kids, the car is a great option or hiking or, um, you know, as a previous life, I was like a hour bound instructor. So I totally agree with that. Meeting kids where they are and coaching, coaching, you can sort of drop some things in about, um, just trust and, and body and this outlook and health but I don't really have a choice professionally where I have those conversations like they have to be here so then I have to think about how to make it um comfortable slightly more comfortable than it otherwise could be so d you know I think a lot of the tricks that work are taking the pressure off of uh a young person by sort of generalizing to maybe people they know or some friends and, you know, kind of taking that approach. Like, you know, do you see people that you know doing these things or has it bothered you when you hear about it? And oftentimes that can get a conversation started because you're not directly asking them what they are or are not seeing or doing. You're just kind of starting a, an open-ended conversation where they can contribute or not depending on what they, how they feel. And I guess the other part is it's very interesting for me to have those conversations with and without parents in the room. Um, and I have, uh, a, a, I don't know if it's just from my immature sort of generalized outlook, but I, I tend to be able to connect to teenagers in a way that um, their parents a lot of times, they'll tell me more things, I guess, when their parents leave. <laughs> Um, which, and I think it's really important to give them that space and, and try to ensure them the trust that they need to, to do that. It's sometimes kind of hard for parents to hear because it, it means that they may not know everything, but it's um, they're proven to be a safe option for people over the age of you know, 12 or 13 to have that space. Thanks, Katie. And that's such a protective factor for, for our kids to have other adults besides us as parents to talk to. Like, you know, just, you know, because they, they don't feel 
comfortable coming to us or they don't want to worry us, you know, with things. So, you know, it's, it's really important that they have, you know, and you allow them to have those trusted people in their lives that they can talk to. Um, and on that note, I'm actually, I'm, I'm just kind of going on my screen. Um, my son, Nate, is on the on the call tonight. He's a youth council member. And Nate, would you introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, hi. So um, I'm Nate. Um, that's, uh, my mom said I'm part of the youth council. Um, and I guess, I mean, I think Scott, I said it really well um, with you don't always really get to choose when and also like where the other person in the conversation is most comfortable. But I guess the one that like if I'm envisioning a conversation, which I think is the way uh, you phrased it, is probably a classroom because that's where um, I mostly see my peers, especially now. Um, so, yeah, I guess that would be my answer. Good, thank you. Um, and I, Allison. Hi everyone, I'm Allison Link. I'm one of my hats and my main professional hat is Healthy Lamoille Valley Policy and Community Outreach Coordinator. And what can I say? I think about also in the way other folks have said, meeting people where they're at on an individual level, but I tend to be in places, well, not during COVID, but well, sometimes during COVID, where there are lots of people like at um, community events and or on the sideline of a soccer practice or other places where, you know, I'm, I'm running after a three-year-old while I'm also kind of talking to everybody else who's there. And it's just, we do talk about all different kinds of things. And I feel like I look forward to kind of getting back to that, to talking about substance prevention and, and other pieces. And I have the quote, I'm gonna have to read it. This is what Peter Welch said, investment deficit and prevention is taking responsibility that people all have a fair shot at making healthy choices. So there you go. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for finding that and sharing it. So, um, so I did put together just a, a little bit of a, a slideshow, um, trying to make this a little more interesting as well. Um, so I'm trying a, a new uh, new design for slideshow, uh, Canva. Uh, it's a you know uh, pretty pretty good. Um, so the slideshow is prevention conversation tips for finding success. So um, and. Uh, hopefully this will be exciting. It's already engaging. Um, I'm super excited to have you all here. Um, and so, you know, often we we plan for things, you know, you're going on a vacation, you plan, you know, if you're, you know, going shopping, you make a list, you know, but often we start conversations without any planning. And so, you know, that's just one of those really basic early steps is to think about these conversations before they happen. So, um, and that's something that, you know, everybody can do. Um, the other thing is to kind of um, relax and breathe. You know, we, we do, we kind of psych ourselves out um, thinking we're going to get something wrong or we're going to tick somebody off or we're going to miss something. Um, but, but recognizing that sometimes the most meaningful substance prevention conversations are a series of conversations um, built over time time uh, with a trusting relationship, you know, and really taking time to get to know the person you're having the conversation with, asking questions, you know, reading their, you know, as Scott said, reading their comfort level, um, and, and just really, you know, not trying to just like cram it all in. So, um, you know, you know, if you're doing a select board presentation, you might just have that that one conversation opportunity. But in most cases, um, you're going to have multiple opportunities. Um, so many shorter conversations uh, combined with modeling substance prevention in practice may be more effective um, and can't under or overestimate enough the importance of that modeling of, you know, you know, people are always watching, you know, so. Um, the other thing is know your audience, who you're talking with. You know, I think, you know, I think both uh, Haley and Katie really touched on this of, you know, kind of getting to know your, you know, who they are, what they like, you know, um, and, and not just, you know, going the, the dare, you know, model. So, of you know, this is your brain, 
you know, this is your brain on drugs, but just kind of, you know, what things do they like? What are those uh, commonalities that you have with them? Um, whether it's a, you know, I think, and this applies across the age groups, you know, um, and in your, your community, you know, if you're going to go, if you do choose to go talk to your select board, what are the issues that are important to them and finding how that ties into to substance prevention? You know, if it's a, a group of parents, you know, what issues are important to them? It might be that, you know, vaping is really important, but alcohol isn't. So maybe you start you know, talking about vaping and then lead the conversation that, you know, around multiple substances and how often youth don't just use one. So, um, you know, knowing the types of conversations and planning in advance, you know, are they going to be super, you know, informal or formal? You know, uh, again, Scott talked about going to where they feel most comfortable. You know, um, you know, are there things that you need to have in place? You know, um, you know, some conversations you might want to bring out your prescription drug safety information and really like, you know, talk about, you know, do you lock your medicines or, you know, hey, you, you know, I know you had surgery recently, you know, and you're, you're doing great, but you know, you can drop those or mail them back, you know, and here's information on that. So some conversations you might want to hand out the brochure, but not always. Um, but, but those resources are available. So kind of preparing, preparing in advance, um, you know, the setting matters, you know, if you're, you know, planning on having a, a, you know, a conversation on a hike that might look very different than a grocery store conversation. So just really being prepared for that. Um, Allison and Brian, I'm not able to see the chat. So if there's things that are coming up in there, um, do feel free to interrupt and, and share those out. So I can see that there's comments happening there. Um, but. Um, the other piece is knowing your resources, you know, and taking time to look at them uh, in advance. Um, we'll put this in a follow up email with the actual web links. Um, but, you know, Maria mentioned the youth risk behavior survey data, you know, looking at the Lamoille Valley data and knowing, you know, what those percentages are of youth that are using and recognizing there's a lot of youth that aren't using too. You know, often in prevention, we, we talk about, you know, the bad things, but also talking and celebrating about the good things, you know. Um, but looking at, you know, the, the number of youth that eat, you know, dinner with the fam their families, you know, that might actually be a great conversation point is look at those protective factors, you know, um, and, and really celebrate those and, you know, encourage those with the people that you know. Um, but using using data, then it's not just, you know, he said, she said, it's, it's these are the facts. These are what students are reporting. Um, and on a note on that, um, we're going to, we have the 2019 data um, and we're not going to get, uh, normally they would be issuing the, the YRBS this spring, um, but because of COVID, uh, that's actually being delayed until next fall. So that's just a, a point of information. Um, you know, there's parentupvt.org, uh, which is an amazing website. Uh, I can't overstate that enough. Um, and there's there's resources for that. Um, we have notepads. Um, so if you wanted to like, you know, you're doing a, a a gift pack for somebody who wanted to throw in a parent up notepad, you know, hit us up. We have a lot of these. Um, we also have, you know, the parent up flyers. Um, there is a, a new one about uh, marijuana out there as well. Um, so th that's available. Um, uh, you know, our website, we try to keep it up to date. Um, you know, if that's something that you would like to be involved as a coalition member, uh, we're always looking for, for help on those things too. Um, we have 802 Quits, uh, that's out there. Um, National Institute on Drug Abuse. Um, they also have a site for teens, NIDA for teens, where it really is, is a developmentally appropriate level um, for youth to learn the, the impact. So it's not just mom and dad said, or my coach said, it's, yeah, this is backed up by facts and science. Um, also out there is the Truth Initiative, um, which is a lot of around vaping and, and uh, this is quitting, they have a helpline. Um, and so, so really kind of knowing what the sub matter is going to be, you know, might get guide uh, what resources and then uh, cadcud.org. And they have actually have a, a daily listserv um, that you can, um, by being part of Healthy Lamoille Valley, uh, if, if you want to be on that, let me know. Um, and we can just add your email. They don't spam you. They just compile questions from around the country um, and responses. So it's this really nice prevention community um, beyond the Lamoille Valley. So you're able to kind of tie in and ask questions. Um, um, and that's that's a really great great resource. So, 
Um, Allison, is there anything in the, the chat that I should be adding before I, I go to the next slide? I think we're taking care of it. It was just a question about YRBS and just that the county level data is available, but this um, 2019 data on the local um, school or school district level is not available. No, it's not, not currently available. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So. Um, and then, you know, taking the time to have practice conversations with safe people, and we're going to have that opportunity in a few minutes, you know, so, so, you know, not feeling like you have to like, you know, prepare and then like have this up one opportunity to talk to the person, you know, but recognize that like you have trusted people in your life that you talk to every day. That's really natural. So, so use those people, bounce ideas off them, you know, uh, you know, or, you know, if you have a question you don't know, kind of seek out a prevention mentor, you know, uh, Katie is often a, a mentor for me when I have questions, you know, her expertise as, in the arena of, you know, being a doctor is, is great for me as somebody in the prevention field, you know, I'm happy to answer questions. I know Michelle Salvador with the Department of Health is, you know, and, and use each other, you know, to ask questions. And what do you think about this? You know, um, it's, it's really important to be able to do that. Um, you know, and then when you actually get around to, to having the conversation, you know, just remember, you know, good principles of good communication, you know, listening to each other, eye contact, you know, um, you know, body language, facial expressions, all those things are, are super important. Um, but also just I wanted to kind of zero in on a, a few of these is, you know, respect, speak out of a place out of respect for the person. You know, so like, you know, sometimes with, with youth, we, we talk down to them, you know, but ask questions, you know, be respectful, but also out of respect for those who may be struggling uh, with substance misuse disorder. So, you know, not using stigmatizing language like addict or junkie, you know, or dirty or clean, you know, but really talking about them with respect as well. You know, they, they've gotten into this, you know, uh, pattern of use that's that's negatively impacting their life and you know and recovery is possible and it's you know it's something that we can celebrate their recovery but we want to really maintain their dignity and, and respect too so even if you're not talking with somebody in recovery making sure that you know you're using good respectful language around that is, is really important um, honesty, you know, be honest, don't skew the data or inflate the problem. You know, I think sometimes we, we want people to pay attention. And so it's easy to say, you know, everybody's doing it, but really in reality, you know, it's, it's 30%, you know, so it's, it's, it's really important that we work to reduce that 30%. Um, but just being, being honest, because otherwise you're, you're really, you know, built, losing that trust with whoever you're talking to. Um, there was actually some materials recently that I got that used national data, but they didn't use local data. And I'm like, the, the youth are going to see that and they're going to be like, no, that's that's not accurate. You know, so it was it was a, something that we didn't have the adaptability on. So it's it's a resource that we probably won't use with with local youth. So, you know, honesty is so important uh, in this work. Um, clarity, you know, what is the problem that you're hoping to address? You know, you may have friends that throw, you know, in normal times, you know, all the drinks in one cooler. And you may be like, you know, I've noticed that last summer, at, you know, when we had that remote gathering, you know, you, you put all the, you put the sodas and the, you know, the beer in the same cooler. And, you know, we have a lot of kids. So maybe we need to have two different coolers if we're going to have alcohol here, you know, but just being really direct of like, let's, let's do this differently. And here's why. Um, and then share facts and data, you know, use your prior research that you've, that you've done uh, to support the conversation. So, um, um, then, Maria has yeah. a, has a um, great comment to share that she shared in the chat. Yeah, Maria, do you want to share that? Thanks, Allison. Oh, I have, I was just saying that I have two youth who uh, every time I come up with data, did you know this? And I'm trying to probably shock them. <laughs> they they come have a comeback saying, well, actually, I do know about it. And Sir Google has told me this, this, and that. And a lot of times I have to validate that data because it's true. They actually know it better than I do. My mm -hmm. kids don't do any of that stuff, but at least not that I know of. But I have to be honest, 100% honest all the time. And if I go back and, and I'm wrong and the, the data that I'm giving them is wrong, you know, I, I just have to say, okay, I'm gonna try again. And thanks for that information <laughs> and move on. 
like you're saying, yeah. the media literacy is so important, you know, and, and building that, like that's in a lot of the curricula that we look at is developing media literacy um, and knowing what are reliable sources. Um, but I also see, I know Jessica might want to respond to that, but I also see Deb put in and Brian's been responding to it. Does anyone know about kinds of podcasts that talk about prevention and that the youth council is kind of working on something like that. So just different ways of sharing information. Yeah, and there are coalitions out there that that do podcasts, um, and so that might be something that we put, would put on the listserv, um, and you know, get links to other podcasts that youth are doing around the country, um, because so often youth really listen to youth better than they listen to to us as you know adults sometimes. So, um, so we will look and try to get that resource um, and share that out um, as well. Um, I went to one of the CADCA workshops um, in August actually, uh, and it was a, a group that was doing a podcast. So I'll see if I can find that link or if there's others out there. Um, so thank, thank you, that's that's great feedback. Um, asking questions and truly listening, you know, uh, the, the what are you seeing approach you know, uh, with with classmates is is really great. Or you know, even using that with adults. You know, um, and then taking the time to to listen and understand just leads to to better conversation. Um, asking follow up questions um, and seeking to understand. And then, so what did you mean when you said you know? Or tell me more about you know, circling back around. Um, and then leaving space to get answers. So if they ask you questions and you don't know the answer, it's okay to say, you know what, I don't really know. Um, let me get back to you on that. Um, but then you really need to get back to them on that. Uh, but it opens the door for, for future discussions. And uh, Maria, you brought up a, a point that I didn't include in the slides, but sometimes our information is outdated or it's, you know, and something else comes along and to, to admit, admit or that we made a mistake or, you know what, that I, I didn't have the right data on that or I mixed up the numbers or, you know, we're human and, you know, this field is changing often. Um, so, you know, keeping, you know, that, that willingness to admit like we're not right about everything is, is so important in conversations, especially prevention conversations. So. You know, and then, you know, just recognizing that sometimes you're just building readiness you know, not every conversation needs to change somebody's mind and, and make them, you know, the, you know, the prevention champion of the year, you know, so you're just, you know, each one is just kind of planting a seed, you know, it's, it's raising awareness, you know, um, you know, a few years ago, uh, Katie actually went to some of our shop our stores and, and talked about CBD on the counters and just asked about that, you know, and, you know, just by her doing that, it raised the awareness like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have this right here where, where youth could just buy it, you know? So, you know, so that, that could be the type of conversation you might have is, is with, you know, a, a store manager or, you know, even the sales clerk of, you know, oh, what's this new product? You know, you know, it's right next to the candy, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, it looks like it might be more of a 21 plus product. Maybe it needs to be in a different part of the store. Um, you know, uh, one of the, I noticed that one of our stores had a lot of wine on the, the soda side of the aisle for a while. And we spoke to the store manager and they got moved. So, you know, your conversations, there's power in that, you know, so it's, it's still in the same aisle because that's the way the store is set up, but the displays of the wine isn't on the same side as the soda. So, you know, that is more of a youth product. Um, so, so really thinking about that. So, uh, is, is super important, um, you know, and then, you know, um, you know, we're here as a resource, all of us. And so we're happy, happy to be that resource. Um, the website's there. Um, and, uh, you know, that's part of what coalition is, is just, you know, people helping people have, have important conversations and supporting each other in the work of, to reduce youth substance misuse. So are there any sort of general, you know, feedback on that, some sparked something before we, before we go into to breakout rooms and uh, welcome uh, to our, our newcomers. Jessica, can I just say one thing you made me think about? Um, you know, you bring me back to like, just actually writing those emails to different stores when sort of CBD products first came out. And it makes me wish I had actually done a little bit better job and gone a little bit further with it because 
if I, I think the next step, and this is where I probably could have engaged with you and gotten a little bit more support because I did get some engagement from some stores and none from others. Right. Um, so some people just thought I was full of it and didn't want to hear it. And some people didn't respond at all, but then some people like the, the best example was MoCo. MoCo really took it seriously, wrote me a letter back, put their products in a glass case. You know, they actually like put some investment into that. And I was really grateful, but I think the step that I should have done was to write about that publicly. And I never really did. And I wonder, you know, that's where I, just from a bandwidth standpoint, probably could use like your help. And so that's, that's where I think, you know, as we and groups like this, as we're partners, we might all have good ideas, but then recognize our own limitations. And um, I, you know, we really need to reach out and say, you know, can you like take it from here? Um, because there's only so much that we each can do, but we all have really good ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so a, maybe a we great... should write that letter. Like, you know, you're making me want to follow through with that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's celebrating successes too. You know, you know, that's a, a very, very public success that, that led to a, a great, you know, outcome, you know, and, uh, we can, we should be celebrating those. And uh, I don't think it's too late. So um, they actually had us in after that um, to do a store audit um, where we just, you know, went in and kind of looked at things through a a youth lens um, and, you know, around product placement. So it it even led to something, something more. um, And And that is, and if I jump in, that is something that um, we're following up on and, and even into next year's, um, next fiscal year's work plans, like looking at, and Katie, what you're saying resonates so much as like, you know, you're doing the initial piece and then, you know, what's the follow-up? And I, and I think that that's the key of like, you know, that there is follow up along the way that there may be initial conversations, the seeds are planted and how it further develops and how we develop those relationships with folks so that we go in three months later and we see something that maybe, you know, your letter is not as fresh in their mind or the visit that we, one of us had or the conversation is not as fresh. How do we, you know, do that kind of follow up so that it's ongoing? Um, and- well, and also because I think there's been, you know, I'm just using MoCo for an example and I know you said not to use examples, so I'm sorry. Um, but you know, they could have had a full staff turnover by now. I don't know, you know, they might not even realize why it's in there. So um, yeah, it's and interesting I, that you've done that audit. And now I think, you know, this would be an opportunity for us to do that and make maybe make some other stores think again and say, oh, you know, we could probably get a glass case and talk about the placement of our product. Yeah, and it's beyond CBD, you know, it's uh, it's tobacco, it's, it's alcohol, it's all these things, um, all the substances mm. that are, and some that may be coming, as we all know, so. And I can't emphasize enough to this group how important it is to write things. I am not one that likes to write and post stuff, but there are some things that just throw me in there that I get so angry that I have to write about it. And recently I testified at the Senate Committee on Health and Welfare, um, twice. Uh, Once with advocates who were against, um, I'm sorry, once with advocates who were for S24, which is basically an act relating to banning flavored tobacco products and e-liquids. And then again, they brought me back because the tobacco industry was actually testifying. So I, they wanted to hear me before the tobacco industry was testifying and they came up with so much rubbish. But in any case, I had to write about it afterwards and I was encouraged both by HLV as well as the Heart Association who invited me as well um, to that table. And I posted it on the Time Argus. I posted it in the Stowe Reporter and I'm, pro- I'm probably gonna do it the same for Vermont Digger and Front Porch Forum. I just need the time to do it. Um, but it's so important because it is getting out there and the Heart Association posted my letter and other media outlets because the Senate committee needs parents like us to step up or physicians to step up and say, yeah, this is a problem. This is what we're seeing. You know, we really need somebody to help us with this and get the word out. And so that's important to me. And 
for me to be at that table and for me to listen to those senators speak about this ban was so critical to me because I think they're all on board. And the businesses were also there. They were fighting for their retail shops to remain open, but a lot of the businesses also have a moral compass and they think, actually, we really should be on board with this. I don't want to sell that product anymore. And they've chosen not to sell those products. So there are businesses out there that are willing to do this and take up this fight with us. Yeah, and even some of the, the businesses that are, are pro-use um, are not pro-underage use. And so they're willing to do some steps um, to make sure that um, youth aren't getting those substances. So um, I do want to go into to breakout rooms um, right now. Um, we're going to have... Uh, you know, three or four breakout rooms. And then um, just think of a conversation that you've had um, or that you li would like to have, um, you know, kind of share the, the general audience, uh, the topic, you know, and kind of do a little bit of workshopping among yourselves of, you know, you know, maybe it's, I'm really worried about this piece or, you know, you know, I, I, I had this conversation and it, 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 it went really well and I want to like, you know, have another conversation or, you know, so just kind of like workshop that uh, um, and we'll go to those breakout rooms now for, for about seven or eight minutes. So, you know, about two minutes per person uh, in your room and then, then we'll pull you back um, for, for a little bit of, you know, quick share outs and then, then some announcements um, and try to get you out at, by seven. So. Um, so uh, here we go. It's good. It looks like everybody's back. Well, we um, can we cut you off in mid sentence. <laughs> yeah, nice yeah, to be in a group. I, we didn't have a choice but to come back, Jessica. Sorry, I, yeah, I was <laughs> rattling on some good old stuff in there, and then boop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good, like good. An episode of Star Trek. Boop, I got surprised. <laughs> So, so um, a couple of like, we have a couple of great announcements, um, you know, um, that I want to make sure we get to. Um, so, but I also want to like capture like some of these great, uh, like, um, you know, um, moments that you probably just had in, in your breakout rooms. So, um, do you each, each, does each, there's three breakout rooms. Does each breakout room want to just give a, a like a one minute, like, summary of some key takeaway like how was that for you um uh let's see sure we yeah i can go our, our group go we, we touched on a number of issues but one uh topic that we talked a lot about was uh schools not reopening and how that's affected uh mental health of a lot of a lot of students as well as teachers um, and kind of the connection that that has to substance abuse issues. And um, we also talked kind of briefly at the end a little bit about um, alcohol consumption among adults and how alcohol sales are up, unfortunately. So um, those are some of the topics we covered. Awesome, thank you. Another room? Ken, do you, do you wanna do this? Because um, you, you had a lot to say and I was listening very intently. Uh, I just was discussing that, um, you know, re raising youth in, in today's world is, is, you know, it gets different year after year after year and, and struggles. And to have these resources put out there and building these teams, I feel is so important uh, because it, you know, the old saying of it takes a village to, to raise a child is, is just so true. And mm -hmm. what we're finding is the more resources that we can put together ourselves as, as, parents, um, it, it just helps because if we're not 100% educated on something, we're, we're building that team, that, that village, so to speak, to, to reach out. So um, that's so just all we talked about in our room. Um, we didn't get into a, a lot of other yeah. details. Yeah, that, that's awesome though. So yeah, it really is helpful that can be able to have other people you connect with and bounce ideas off of. So that team approach is, is so needed right now. So, and our last room, any highlights or? Um, so we talked um, just about how hard this year has been and how there, um, you know, there don't seem to be services at schools and it's, it's, you're not even in school. So how 
can teachers see kids to check in on them or other administrators and and coaches who can you know say something to kids so it's it's been really tough this year and of course the whole you know so many more people are are suffering from a mental health perspective because of the isolation and of this past year so um yeah so yeah we we talked about a lot of the struggles yeah and there, there's a lot and and in all of our conversations coming from a place of compassion and understanding uh, is so important especially right now um, so a couple of you uh, touched on the mental health issues. Uh, that is actually our goal for the next coalition meeting is to really start to look at you know, some of the, the mental health uh, struggles that uh, youth are having right now and how we might, you know, as a community, you know, what are the things that we can do um, to, to support youth um, in, our, in our community, in our lives, um, you know, what supports maybe do those that are doing the direct supports need, you know, uh, they're, they're definitely stretched as well. So, uh, so that'll be the, the topic of, of the next uh, meeting in April. Also, um, we just completed the community uh, and parent survey. So we'll be um, really um, just starting to roll out and share that information. Um, it'll be up on our website um, once we get it in a shareable format. Um, the um, Allison is doing a, a coaches work group uh, and they, I think, have a tentative date uh, for their first training, uh, coaches as protective factors. Uh, so that's that'll be coming up um, because we recognize that coaches play such a role in the lives of our, our students. Um, uh, Brian and Youth Council, uh, they've actually split that into two age cohorts. So there's a sixth through eighth grade and then a ninth through 12th grade, uh, just recognizing the developmental differences. And we got to that critical number to be able to kind of split it into two separate groups. So they'll come together on some projects, but then they'll, they'll work on projects independently as well. So if you know of any youth in that age cohort, uh, connect them to Brian. His email is uh, brian at healthylamoilevalley.org. Org. Uh, and uh, there's a question in the chat for you, Brian. I'm going to let you you answer that. Um, we are also looking for new steering team members. Um, we've had a, had a couple people have to step down uh, just due to life circumstances. Um, you know, they're still very passionate about prevention, but uh, if you had an extra, you know, a couple hours a month um, and are available uh, the middle of the day on the third Wednesday. Uh, let me know and we can have a conversation and see if that might be a good fit for you. Um, also, um, two parent related things. Um, this Thursday, we have a parent cafe. Um, it's uh, actually on the topic of uh, youth substance misuse and what to do about it. Uh, if you should discover a youth in your life is, is using a substance uh, or their friends and, and how do you get them help? Uh, and that'll be uh, the conversation or the, the training part of that is um, uh, Matt Sadowski from uh, uh, Lamoille Health Partners. Um, they just changed their name. Uh, so uh, that'll be exciting. And that piece, his piece will be recorded and put up on our website as well. And last month, um, Allison shared, um, and that's up on our website. So feel free to share those resources out. Um, we're running out of time. Also, um, we're looking to potentially start a parent work group. So, um, so parents, you know, connecting with other parents and what are the issues, you know, and, you know, what sort of like, you know, so it's not just staff driven, but, you know, parents are choosing like, you know, is there a media campaign that seems like that would be a good fit or do we need to focus our efforts on a certain area? Uh, so that'll be coming soon. Uh, so watch for that. Um, Allison has a tobacco task force or vaping task force. Uh, so you can be involved in that way. Um, all of our emails for staff are just our first name at healthylamoilevalley.org. Um, and I thought that it might be kind of fun to end the meeting, you know, with a with a fun drawing each time. So I'm going to share my screen. We'll see if this works. Anytime we do tech, it's always a little, little um, tricky. We have a, a t-shirt, a Healthy Lamoil Valley t-shirt. And on the back, it says it takes all of us. Um, and so we're going to spin and see where this ends up. So uh, it makes me really dizzy to look at it. So uh, Ken. <laughs> so 
So, um, so I will uh, connect with you and we will get you a t-shirt. So congratulations, Ken. Um, and uh, really though, thank you all for being here. And I'm happy to stay on for a bit longer. I just wanna also be respectful of people's time um, and knowing that you know some of you may be waiting dinner or have other meetings that you need to get to. But if you wanna continue conversation, uh, feel free to stick around, so. Jessica, when's our next steering committee meeting? I think Haley it's, and Katie. It's, a, it's the third third Thursday or third Wednesday of each month, so it'll be the seventeenth. So, and it's in the six o'clock again, right? No, uh, steering team is uh, three to four thirty. Three to four thirty. That's it. Yeah, so it's a a different time slot for those. So, bye, folks that are heading out. Thanks so much. Looking so, yeah, to thanks for being here. here. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah. Yeah, thank you all for having me, and uh, thanks for the T-shirt. Um, oh, you're welcome. I will gloves? email you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It'll go so. with my compression gloves? They will. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah.